So I just, um, I'm going to save all the great questions for the documentary, of course. Right. But, but I wanted to like, um, just get a feel. I have, I, I've got a fun question uh, that I want to pose at you. Um, because I know you fairly well. We met the first time in, in um, I think it was Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, do you remember that so long of ago? Of course, that was one of the highlights of my life. Oh. Such a great time. Um, there, the thing that struck me was how humble you are about being such an elegant, and incredible magician. And yet you seem to always credit your mentors. Everybody is about because of your mentors. Yeah. Right. Now, it was a long time ago, but I remember like Slidini and uh, Alan Allen and Larry. Correct. Gary, Gary, um, Harry, don't forget Harry Lorraine. Oh, Harry Lorraine. <laughs> I can't. He's a memory expert. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so the one that got me, if you were to say what was from all those mentors, what was the most important lesson you ever learned? Well, first of all, I was an only child. I had no father figure in my life. This is quite significant. So all of my mentors were much older than me. I made friends with men older than me. And what was warming for me was, I, I have to say this because it's relevant, being a young black kid walking into a magic shop and having the owners treat me like an equal, I cannot tell you what that meant to me because I experienced a lot of racism. And then to have these magic shop owners, let me tell you, this is no ego. When I was 14, I could do some pretty cool tricks because I read the magic book from the library, Harry Lorraine, jog shuffles and all the moves and so forth. So when I met Alan Allen, he was blown away and I'm not exaggerating. He said, where'd you learn that? I said, oh, I've got the Harry Lorraine book from the library. He said, oh, he's a friend of mine. My head popped open when he said that. <laughs> So, and then when I left the shop, do you know what he said to me? He said, will you be coming back to the shop again? I said, well, if my mother lets me, because I live very far from here. It's a, it's a train journey. He said, well, look, if you come again, it'd be nice to see you. This is a man in his 50s speaking to me as a 14 year old. So I had a reason to go back. And then he said to me, what are you reading at the moment? I said, I'm still reading the Harry Lorraine book. And the most valuable lesson Alan said to me, Michael, Never forget this, magic is a means of communication. Yes. I said to him, what do you mean? He said, well, stop and think for a minute. What is communication? Well, you talk, I listen. And if what you're saying makes sense to me, then you've communicated to me. I'm 14 and that's what I said to him. And if I say something to you that doesn't make sense, you have to say to me, Michael, can you say that in a way that makes sense to me? So there's no communication if what we're saying makes no sense. And if it does make sense, then what? What can we create out of the conversation? That's Alan. And that would be the running thread throughout our entire relationship. Okay? Yeah. When I met Harry, Harry said to me, Michael, keep yourself at the level you want to live at. I said, what do you mean? He said, set your standard and maintain it and defend it with your life. Okay, Rene Levan, he said, Michael, a man without dignity is not a man. Wow. La Larry Jennings, Michael, practice the real move and the fake move once every beat. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, do the natural actions. And if the fake move doesn't match or is congruent, you're gonna have to make some adjustments. This, was my, this, this is what sleight of hand is all about making the unnatural natural and if there's anything unnatural well how do you make it natural so it doesn't arouse suspicion slidini he said you've got to become a master of understanding your own mannerisms vernon said be natural slidini said mannerisms how do you gesture how do you walk how do you stand the first thing slidini had me do was walk into his living room and he said pretend you're on stage come out and greet the audience. And I walked in like the hunchback at Notre Dame. He said, what a matter, stand up straight, stand up straight. <laughs> With his Italian, he said, stand up straight and own the theater. And it's so beautiful because this man was talking to me as an equal. 
Michael Skinner, his last words, this is so beautiful. He said, Michael, you're a great magician. Fool your audience, fool them badly, but be nice about it. Oh, so good. Here's the most profound thing Vernon said to me. I think this is relevant because of the show. He said, Michael, when you do a magic trick for a layman, pay attention to the way they react to you. I said, what do you mean? He said, the way a layman reacts to your magic will tell you everything you need to know about how they approach life. He didn't say any more. So I started watching. Some people react like six-year-olds. Oh, oh, Happy-go-lucky, full of wonder. Some people are pretty cynical. Don't want to be fooled. Engineers, very analytical, belligerent. They want answers. Hmm. Let me tell you, that's when I realized that performing, performing magic for lay people is an exercise in understanding human psychology. For me, it's no longer about the tricks now. It's about finding tricks that allows me the opportunity to go inside someone's mind and have a little walk around and see what's in there. Oh, that's so Sean, good. do you realize the great magicians, and I put you and myself, especially Tamarez, we are a friendlier version of Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> there's the quote of the day <laughs> and not not carnivorous either do you get that i do absolutely and when i do my show for people i am on intimate terms with them far more than they realize why because they have shown me for a split second who they are just by the way they respond to a simple line or a moment of magic because ideally our job is to lift the filter. And as Paul Harris said, when you hit that moment of astonishment, it's like a bright blinding light where something is revealed. We've lifted the veil and life becomes something we're familiar with, but we haven't experienced for a very long time, probably when we were kids yeah. and everything was amazing. And for me, this is this gave, it just made me realize what a privilege it is to be a magician or a sleight of hand artist, because at the end of the day, my ego is dead when it comes to performing now. It's no longer about me and feeling good about myself. I already feel good. Do you want to know what my motto is? This is something I learned from you when we were in South Africa. I used to think to myself, what is Sean on? This guy comes on stage like he's the happiest guy on earth. And I'm thinking there's no drug available to get that high. But you know what? It was real because I saw it. And I figured I need to generate myself. So when the audience experiences me within the first three seconds, I want my audience to say, what on earth is Vincent on? I want some of that. And that's before my first trick. I love it. Tell me I'm wrong. No, you're 100% right. 100%. Oh. <laughs> Maybe, um, I think uh, John Rockerbottom was very kind in a review once he said, Sean sits in the front seat of his own roller coaster. And I think if, you know, sitting in the front seat of your own roller coaster is the perfect description for what you and I do. We want to be on the ride at the front, just having a blast and everybody else will come for the ride Absolutely. with us. Absolutely. And we, it's almost like we're the Pied Piper, come along for the ride. Exactly. We're going to take a little trip into Wonderland. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of Earth, Wind and Fire. And they wrote a song called Wonderland, yeah. not Boogie Wonderland, nope. yeah. just Wonderland. And the opening lines is beautiful. Listen to this. Come on in and enter as a child. Always wear a smile. Fun and laughter here all the while. That's, Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. Really is. Isn't that, beautiful? <laughs> that, that to me is the song for all magic. Uh, it is. It really is. On that note, I'm, I... I just want to say thank you for this. And I am so looking forward to coming to London and hanging with you and, and picking your brain for all the questions for Lost in the Shuffle. I have no doubt that when I see you perform, I will feel like I'm six again. I have no oh, doubt whatsoever. That's great. <laughs> yeah. 